everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is freezing and arctic outside. It's like 25 degrees and sleeting and icy. And so we're working inside the shop today. So what I have planned for today is disassembling the front suspension on this 1982 Corvette. Uh, it needs bushings like most do. It needs ball joints. And we're going to do a couple of extra things with it. I'm not going to show you the complete process because that would make an insanely long video. But what I'm going to show you is some tips and tricks that you guys can do when disassembling your front suspension to make it just a little bit easier. Luckily, front suspension from 1968 to 1982 is virtually the same. There's basically no difference other than the 68 had a few different things about the spindle, but it comes apart all the same. So the main goal that we want to do is we want to isolate this spindle from the rest of the car. So what I mean by that is we need to disconnect this tie rod. We need to take the brake caliper off. We need to take the sway bar link off. And then we need to take the shock out that attaches the lower control arm to the frame. And then once that is all apart, then we can work on separating the spindle from the ball joints and getting everything apart, which is its own process in itself. But you can see this upper ball joint has rivets. It's original. I think the lowers have been changed, but they're due for replacement anyway. All the bushings and stuff are all falling apart and just crappy. And then the main concern is the control arm bushings are all cracking and basically falling apart. So he wants those changed out. We're first going to start with the front brake caliper. So here's the thing. If you're doing front suspension, you don't want to do brakes at the same time, especially like on this car, if the brakes already work. So here's the first tip on removing the brake caliper. So you're gonna find if you remove it, the hose, see that hose from there to there? It actually is still gonna be in the way of everything, even if let's say you took the caliper off and moved it up here. So the, the, the secret is you wanna remove this bump stop right here on the bottom and then you can actually kind of fish the caliper back through here and then up here. Sad to say, someone's replaced these calipers before and they did not do it correctly and they kept the hoses and then they twisted the hoses. So you can see that doesn't help anything and they shouldn't be twisted like that. They start rubbing on stuff. So we'll take the caliper off, we'll take that bump stuff off and I'll show you guys how to fish it through. See if I can capture this without completely blocking the camera. The caliper comes off like that. And you're able to pass it through. This one's kind of awkward because they did the line wrong. It's all twisted. So you can't untwist it. See, that's the secret to these calipers is if you install them that way, see if I installed it back again, it wouldn't be twisted anymore because, anyway, something you can learn. So I'm gonna zip tie it up top, up pretty much over here to the frame, get it out of the way, and then that way we don't have to bleed brakes, and that's an awesome thing. Here on the passenger side, you can kind of see how the uh, brake line is supposed to look, but brand new caliper, ancient brake line. I don't understand. Why do people do this? Sorry guys, it's time for a rant. Okay, this car's 45 years old. You replace calipers because the rubber inside has given out and they're leaking. Why wouldn't you replace the rubber line that goes with the caliper? It's not like you're working on like a 10 year old Honda. Replace them. If you're doing a caliper, do a line. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. I guess my rant isn't over. <laughs> New caliper, <laughs> old pads. <laughs> Look at this, I, I just lifted the caliper off and this pad just completely fell apart. And you can see this one on the other side is kind of doing the same thing, it's starting to separate. I don't understand, I mean, how much is a set of pads? Next, we're gonna talk about these sway bar bushings and in reality, all the bushings that you put in your Corvette front suspension. So these are actually, polyurethane bushings <laughs> they really don't last I think they're fairly new but they've kind of just fallen into pieces 
they're really hard and they're just not just put rubber in guys you don't drive a race car you don't drive an autocross car just put in rubber bushings and you'll be fine <laughs> next we're going to talk about removing the shocks so a lot of times what you'll find is that these top nuts are rusted to the shaft and when that happens like you put an impact on it and it'll just spin this whole shaft itself will spin because it's it spins inside the shock it's not connected to anything inside so um, when that happens if that happens what you can do is you can get a socket with a really long extension and then just wobble it back and forth back and forth back and forth and this shaft will end up just breaking off at the nut and that way you don't have to deal with it so let's see what happens on this one and see if we're gonna get lucky. All right, we got lucky. The nut came off, and then here's the bushing. And taking out these shocks, you can see this one has oil on the bottom. Pretty much means it's bad. The other one is still acting fairly well. I mean, it does have some resistance when you push down on it, but I mean this one, you know, I just barely push and it goes straight in. There's almost no resistance at all. So they are trash at this point. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are these tie rod ends. So at least one has to be disconnected from the spindle. And in the past, what I would do is I just get a big old hammer and I hit them and they pop out. But the problem is if you don't hit it exactly square and you don't hit it hard enough, you're gonna mess up these threads. Um, we're gonna check out these tie rod ends and see how good or bad they actually are. They're really gross. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. Now get them out a little bit better of a way. I have this. So this is actually made for this job itself. So basically you have this bolt that comes up and it pushes on a lever and then it just nicely and easily pops the tie rod out and the cool part is I didn't know about this until I saw somebody on social media using it and I was like that's the coolest thing ever so I have upgraded I have something cool and I'm sharing it with you guys so you guys can do the same thing and not ruin your tie rod ends we want you to come out Violent, but effective. Look at that. There you go. Tie rod just pops out, hangs down just like that. We're one step closer to getting this front suspension out. All right, next is kind of the sketchy part, but it's not too bad. So we have everything unhooked from the control arms, the shock, the sway bar, um, the brake caliper, the tie rod end. We'll zoom you out. I've removed the rotor because it has previously been removed. Um, it doesn't have to come off, but it is off just because it was wobbling around. So pretty much the only thing holding this together are the two ball joints, one and two. And there's a specific way we want to take this apart just because this spring right here is under a whole bunch of pressure. And if you just undo this and then pop this loose, it's going to fly down. The spring's going to fly out and you're going to get hurt. So this is how we're going to do it. So these ball joint studs are pretty much press fit into the spindle. So I've taken the cotter pin out and what we're going to do, if we can, <laughs> we're going to loosen the nut on this ball joint and then move it down about half of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. Well, if I can, I can't with one hand. We're going to take this, we're going to lower it so there's enough room that we still have threads on the nut. There's enough room for this to come out. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to lower the car and we're going to put a jack underneath this arm to kind of support it. That way it doesn't fly and go everywhere when we pop it loose. Um, I know you guys don't have a lift like I do. But the way we're going to do this is very similar to how you would do it with jack stands underneath the car. It's about the same. So what I've done is I've put the jack underneath the car like this, supporting under the spring pocket on the control arm. 
And what we want to do is we need to get oh, we need to get that ball joint loose. There's a flat spot. You can't really see it because it's covered in grease. There's a flat spot on this spindle. And you want to hit that with a hammer as hard as you can. And then that spindle will pop, uh, the ball joint will pop out and the spindle will drop. You'll kind of see it go And then that way we can then jack it up with the jack a little bit, remove the nut, and then let it all down. Sometimes you really got to wail on it, but you want to hit it right here. You don't want to hit the control arm right here on the spindle. All right, you see it drop? So just drop that little bit. Now the nut is flush to the spindle. Now we're going to jack it up a little bit and remove that nut. Now remember, you don't want to jack it up enough to um, lift the car off the jack stands. But there should be no pressure on this. It should be fairly easy to remove. Now, remind, I'm reminding you guys, I am way far away from this. So if for some reason this pops, Nothing will get hit. Maybe my hand, but that's it. None of my face. I'm not like in front of the, the spring or the spindle or anything like that. Remember, the jack is taking up all the load that, that spring is under because that spring is actually under quite a bit of tension. All right. So. If I didn't have the jack under there, that would have fell on the ground and the spring would have flown out and hurt something, broke something. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to lower, let me move you out of the way, I'm going to lower the jack. Now at this point, if I was on jack stands in a garage, I would take my jack and I would lift the front of the car up so that there's enough clearance to let that spring out. Since I have a lift, I'm going to lift the car up and I'll show you. So here's kind of the sketchy part. <laughs> this is when you want a really long tool or some kind of 2 by 4 See that pop? That's what you, that's what you kind of want to avoid. We got that tie rod. It's doing anything. That pot spring is under pressure. I think we got it mostly off the pressure now. kind of sad. I forgot to record the other side, but the other side did what I did what I wanted this one to do, but it didn't do. Like I lowered the arm and the spring shot across the room. <laughs> this is usually what happens, but that's the safe way to get those out. So good. Now we all we have is Ooh, that's not good. All right, you guys ready for this? All right, guys, this is live. This is the kind of thing that I see all the time. You see this? Yeah, the bolt for this lower control arm is not tight at all. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's scary as heck. You actually just want to check everything and just, I just wonder about everything now. But three bolts gets that lower arm off. Then you can bust that ball, ball joint off. Then you replace bushings, replace ball joints. These upper ones are a little bit more difficult. <laughs> The easiest way to do it is there are studs that go through the frame. You want to tap those back out and that way you can get the arm up and out because you're not going to be able to move it 
far enough that way with all this stuff in the way in order to get it out. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, guys, there you go. There's some quick tips on how to disassemble the uh, Corvette front suspension without killing yourself or your dog or hurting something or ruining your car. Hopefully that helps out somebody um, not do those things. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, feel free to leave a like and a comment. Let me know if you liked the video, and I'll see you guys next time.